This video is part of a series helping you to revise for your A-level chemistry exams. Today we're looking at how to build an effective revision timetable. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to the timetable that I'm using here. If you're preparing for the A-level exams in 2023, then this probably isn't your first time making a revision timetable, but the one that you made in 2021 for your GCSE exams may have looked quite different, particularly if you attended a school that, rather than giving you a full exam series with six big high stakes exams for science, you did lots of little assessments that were added up together to make your centre assessed grade. There's also a chance that you're at a sixth form or a college who don't do AS exams, in which case this may actually be your first time preparing for big, high stakes external exams, and it may even be your first time having any study leave. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of that, but it means that you've missed out on the opportunity to find out what really works for you in terms of revision. And it may be that you're only just starting to realise that traditional revision timetables just aren't really cutting it. So here's an example of what I think is the default for most people when they make a revision timetable. It tends to be hour long slots with a specific topic. And at that time you turn up and you do something to revise that topic. Now this can be a really effective way to organize your time when you have complete control. So much closer to the exams if your sick form or college gives you study leave. But in my experience, particularly at this point in the year, it has some pitfalls. In February, March, even April, you definitely need to have started that revision, but there are still lots of other constraints on your time. Your teachers are probably still providing you with questions and revision tasks that they expect you to complete between lessons. And so you might have planned to revise atomic structure, but suddenly your teacher is asking you to do organic chemistry and you haven't got time to handle both of those. There also might be other opportunities or events you didn't know about. There are lots of online resources and things that you might want to take advantage of. And so, again, you might not be able to use the time for what you'd planned to use it for. It's a bit early to be ignoring your hobbies, but an unexpected rehearsal or training session can get in the way of the plan you've made. And sometimes life just gets in the way, so you miss the bus or something. And some days, well, most days really, concentrating on one topic for an hour is a big ask. Now, if you're anything like me, you might end up feeling like once you've missed parts of the plan a couple of times, well, the whole thing's ruined and there's no point in it anyway. And even if you don't catastrophize like that, this plan can easily leave you feeling overwhelmed or anxious. And that's not a good mental state to be in when you're trying to revise or just live. So what's the alternative? For the last few years, I've recommended that my GCSE and A-level students use a revision tracker like this one rather than a traditional timetable. So instead of committing to a particular topic in advance, you're keeping a note of what revision you're doing and when. And that way you can make sure that you do have even coverage over the whole specification and you're not missing anything out. But it takes away a lot of that anxiety. And it does mean that if you're someone who has lots of time on some days and a lot less time on other days, then you can account for that a lot more easily. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to my tracker if you want to print yourself out one. You'll notice that I've left space at the top here where on the GCSE one I have various different revision strategies written in. But in my experience, often by the time you get to year 13, people have a particular strategy that they really like using. And so it's not always helpful if I have it pre-filled in. If you still haven't found the particular strategy that works for you, then don't forget to check out my playlist of different ones that you might want to have a go at. Now, the idea here is that each box represents probably 20 minutes of revision. So if you're only just starting this in February, there are probably too many boxes for you to get filled in before the exams. But it does mean that for any particular topic, you're unlikely to run out of room. So let's say you start off and on the first day of your revision and using this tracker, you look at the specification for atomic structure and you make a load of notes and that takes you 20 minutes. So you fill in the date there. And then you also look at a couple of other sessions and you can also fill in those for that as well. And then a little while later, you come back and you fill in some gaps and you pick some new topics that you haven't done before because you have that really clear record of what you covered. Now, maybe a little bit later, your teacher gives you something to do, say some exam questions for amount of substance. And so you can fill in the time that you spent on those as well, because that's still part of your revision. And it doesn't matter that it wasn't something that you knew you were going to do. You can still include it within this. So really quickly, you're going to build up a picture of which topics you have and haven't covered. And this is hopefully going to help you to keep on track of the organisation of things and make sure that everything is covered by the time you get to your final exams. 
let's say by mid-March your tracker starts to look something like this, you can say, well, actually, I've covered physical chemistry pretty thoroughly so far, so it's time to press pause on those topics and make sure that actually I'm covering the inorganic and the organic as well. Hopefully you found that a useful suggestion for one way to structure your revision for the A-level exams this year. If you have found this useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry videos coming soon.